enemies and how they act as nucleophiles. And I'll also tell you why enemies are important, okay? So at this point, you're finished with your Pogel. Congratulations, finished with Pogel. Um, we've talked about the mechanism. So let's just recap the mechanisms of alpha substitution. And you can do this with, it. we've talked about ketones, aldehydes, and esters and so that means like if you have a ketone here then alpha substitution you would usually use LDA you make your enolate and then you'd react it with either you can do just um, an alkyl halide which is your electrophile or you could use another electrophile such as um, a primary alkyl halide and so if you use a primary alkyl halide then you get something that looks like that okay so that was alpha substitution the other reaction we've talked about aldol condensation uh, we've also talked about clasian so here's your aldol Clasian uses an ester. Okay, and then we've also talked about the Michael addition. The Michael addition would look something like this, where you have an alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl. And we talked about how this car is so here's your one two three four and this four is a delta positive and soft nucleophiles will attack the the four position and add to that carbon um, and the fifth reaction we've talked about is um, uh, we talked about the aceto acidic acid synthesis with decarboxylation. These were all in your uh, Pogel 23A through C, the acetoacetic acid. Here's your acetoacetic acid. Um, of course, this is an ester here. And we react this with like sodium ethoxide because there's your ester and we make the enolate there that carbon the pka here is i want to say 11. Um, you can check me on that and then you can react that with an alkyl halide um, And you get oculation there. And then you treat this with H3O plus and heat. And that does a hydrolysis of the ester. And then this also does a decarboxylation. We're going to lose that um, CO2, and then it's going to make one, two, three, four, five, a ketone. Okay, so those are four, five reactions that we've talked about, and now we're going to look at enamines. Now, why are enamines important? What is an enamine? Okay, what is an enamine? Usually you do a secondary amine okay so there's your secondary amine and um, if you react this with a ketone there's your alpha 
hydrogens, um, you're going to lose water. So you're going to lose this hydrogen, this hydrogen, and this oxygen to form an enamine. Okay, let's try this again. And, yeah. All right. Do this again. N amine. So there's your double bond. This is your amine. Okay, it's a neutral. And um, we've talked about this in the amine chapter. Now, in amines, you have a, um, a nucleophilic carbon. So this alpha carbon is kind of like a mass nucleophile. Okay, now, so you can react it with an electrophile, such as benzyl bromide, okay? And so what happens is these electrons here on nitrogen push here, and these electrons go here. This is your SN2, and that is how you alkylate the alpha position. And you form a new bond, this carbon here. Okay. Um, so you get the Br minus there to make a salt. And then what you do is you hydrolyze this. So when you add with water and acid, these me, this is a minium salt. We'll hydrolyze. We've done this mechanism back in um, a few chapters back. Water comes in, tax that carbon there. And deprotonate. Do you remember all those steps when we did like six steps? Deprotonate, reprotonate. We're going to. Um, this gets protonated, the carbonyl reforms here, and then the pyrrolidine leaves. This is pyrrolidine. Okay, so it leaves, and you reform your carbonyl there, and you've alkylated. Now, why would you want to do this? Because in reality, aldehydes and some ketones are too reactive for alkylation, alpha alkylation. Okay, so one of the ways to do this is to mask with a secondary amine and then you are able to generate the alpha carbon nucleophile through this protected enamine. And then you just treat it with some acid and water. You can actually do that in your separatory funnel. Okay, so they're a little less reactive than your typical aldehyde or ketone enolate. Um, this reaction where you use a secondary amine to do um, alpha alkylation is called the Stork reaction. And I used to have friends that studied under Gilbert Stork. Gilbert Stork at Columbia University. Okay.
Um, now, notice you can also do isolations. So let's do that real quick. Okay, so if you take this ketone and you react it with pyrrolidine 1 and then you react it with acetone or no acetyl chloride acetyl chloride and then the third thing you treat it with acid all right so what do you get well step one you're going to get the N amine. Okay, so that's your protected alpha carbon here. So this is your alpha carbon. Okay, this is going to be your carbon nucleophile. And your delta positive here is this carbon. This is an acid chloride. So this is going to be your electrophile. So now, these electrons on nitrogen come here, those electrons push, those electrons go up, come down, Cl is a leaving group, and now you formed a new bond, that's your alpha carbon. And you form this iminium ion. And third, you add acid and water. You can do this in your separatory funnel. It will hydrolyze the iminium ion. So you get uh, your ketone back. So you get your nice little ketone back. Now notice, let's look at this product. What is this product? You might want to get this in your reaction sheets. Um, this is a alpha beta. This is a beta keto ketone. So we know that this alpha hydrogen is very acidic. What do you think this pKa is of that hydrogen? If you look it up, you'll see it's a pK of 9. Okay. And so then you can um, alkylate that carbon there, just a little bit of sodium hydroxide and another electrophile. And that is the stork alkylation.